In the annals of history, there are moments that define the fate of nations. Today, we journey back to September 3rd, 1260, to a battle that would shape the destiny of empires. Welcome to Goliath's Stand, the Battle of Ein Jalut. In this epic tale, two formidable forces clashed on the hallowed grounds of Ein Jalut, known as the Eye of Goliath. On one side, the Mongols, with their legendary self-confidence and powerful steeds, believed they were invincible. But on the other, the Mamluks, masters of the terrain, rode swift and imposing horses and possessed a secret weapon that would change the course of battle. The Mamluks unveiled a weapon that struck terror into the hearts of the Mongol horses, an early form of firearm, a handheld cannon, a harbinger of future warfare. Join us as we delve into the heart-pounding action of the Battle of Ain Jalut, where bravery clashed with strategy and where the fate of empires hung in the balance. In the annals of history, the 13th century was a tumultuous time for the Islamic world. The Mongols, under the command of their fearsome leader, launched a relentless assault that plunged the Muslim territories into chaos and fear. Baghdad, the grand capital of the Islamic world, fell under their oppressive rule, marking a dark chapter. Yet, amid these dire circumstances, a beacon of hope emerged in the form of Saif ad-Din Qutuz, he stepped forward as a remarkable leader, guiding the Muslim Ummah in a time when it had lost its central authority. By his side stood the capable Ruken al-Din Baibars, who adeptly employed Mongol military tactics against them. The treacherous betrayal by Ibn al-Alqami, the minister of Khalifa al-Mustasim Billah, paved the way for the Mongol invasion. Baghdad's fall was followed by the Mongols' relentless expansion into Syria, causing the residents to endure persecution and hardship. As the Mongols set their sights on Egypt and Morocco, their menacing message to the Emir of Egypt left the fate of the region hanging by a thread. But what truly altered the course of history was Sultan Qutuz's bold response to the Mongol delegation. His decision to execute the Mongol diplomats and display their bodies sent shockwaves through the region. It not only bolstered the morale of his people, but also conveyed a resolute message to the Mongols. They were dealing with a leader of unwavering determination. Sultan Qutuz drew inspiration from the annals of Muslim history, particularly from luminaries like Abbasid Khalifa Harun al-Rashid. This historical context enriched his actions and provided a deeper meaning to his defiance. Kutuz displayed remarkable foresight in preparing for the impending conflict. He armed his people not only with physical weapons, but also with faith and unity. Sending Baibars to rally Muslim chieftains and unite them against the common Mongol enemy was a brilliant move. Baibars, in turn, played a pivotal role, even commissioning battleships and arsenals and introducing the innovative use of explosive hand cannons. Qutuz understood the power of Islamic scholars and sought the support of the ulama. Al-Az bin Abdis Salam's contributions were instrumental, providing a fatwa for war taxes and addressing issues related to slave chiefs, which helped maintain the people's loyalty. Rukan al-Din Baibars emerged as a formidable military leader, displaying unwavering determination in the face of the Mongol threat. His confidence and resolve were a testament to the indomitable spirit that prevailed in these challenging times. The clash of the Mamluk and Mongol forces at Ain Jalut stands as a pivotal moment, a tale of courage, strategy, and divine intervention. Qutuz, the Mamluk leader, invoked the wisdom of the Prophet, urging his soldiers to advance and defend their territory with honor. Their major forces, led by Katzahi, set their sights on the Crusaders' final strongholds along the Palestinian coast. In a bold move, Qutuz called for Crusader neutrality. Choosing the battleground in a valley encircled by mountains, Kutz and Baybart, the Mamluk commanders, prepared for the impending clash. Warriors were stationed atop the highlands to guard against treachery from all sides. Rukien al-Din Baybars, 
the Mamluk army's general, would emerge as the hero of the battle. As the Mongols closed in, the scales tipped in their favor. Their right wing dominated the Muslim left, causing a retreat that seemed genuine. Yet it was all part of Baibar's cunning plan. Baibars lured the Mongols into a deadly trap, capitalizing on their tactics of ambush and narrow terrain. The Egyptian army ambushed the Mongols in the gorge, disrupting their ranks and subjecting them to a two-pronged assault. Still, the Mongols pressed on. Kutuz, standing atop a rock, rallied his troops with a fervent cry, rejuvenating their spirits. His fearless charge through enemy ranks inspired awe, and the Muslim forces rallied, turning the tide of battle. In a manner unprecedented in Mongol history, Baibars defeated and decimated the invaders. Qutubha Khan, their leader, met his end at Baibar's hands, and the Mongol army was vanquished. Qutubha Khan's lifeless body was displayed in Cairo, alongside other Mongol prisoners. Word of this momentous victory spread like wildfire across Syria and Palestine. Muslims rose against Mongol oppression, reclaiming their cities. The black tempest that had plagued the Muslim Umar for four decades was halted by Rukien al-Din Baibars at Ain Jalut. Although Mongol incursions persisted, their aura of invincibility was shattered. Muslims took up the fight wherever needed, defending their lands, as seen in the Kilji's successful defense against Mongol attacks in India. Divine intervention seemed evident with Monka Khan's death, Hulagu Khan's withdrawal, and Burqa Khan's conversion to Islam. Egypt stood as the last bastion against the Mongols, safeguarded by Allah's grace and the courage of its leaders. Ain Jalut was not merely a battle, it was a turning point in history. It determined the fate of Islamic and Western civilizations. Had the Mongols captured Egypt, their conquests might have stretched to the Straits of Gibraltar, altering the course of history and possibly delaying the European Renaissance. The liberation of the Muslim Umar from Mongol tyranny raised morale and strengthened Islamic teachings, saving them from complacency and defeat. In the grand tapestry of history, Ain Jalut shines as a beacon of valor, unity, and the indomitable spirit of those who defended their faith and lands. <laughs>